and I welcome you to the 8th episode, 9th episode of this epic. In the last episode, we just had hit a bitter defeat, a bitter pill to swallow against the Westphalians, against the Saxons, which marked nearly the end of our little war. And we need some backup. So I thought we will take the medium loan and some cheap mercenaries. Nobody who is too expensive. Someone with 150 soldiers should do just fine. Like that one. Oh. <coughs> I'm very sorry. Oh god, I'm so sorry. Ahem. Uh, as I said, we will take the strongest option in here. Hopefully we can, with, with some luck, destroy them. Oh boy. Yeah, help them in here so they can defeat them quite easily and fastly. Yeah, and then marching upon there so we can take them on. Bigger numbers. We have bigger numbers. In the middle of battle, I catch the sight of a girl wearing the same colors I am. I just have uh, I'm, I just have time to notice the first expression in her face when she is struck down. I feel a pang of guilt, realizing how much she reminded me of my daughter Regenlind. <sighs> There's no time for breaks. For Nordmark, charge! Yeah, we need to win this battle. Otherwise, Nordmark existence is... In question. Ah, and we lose once again. This is, of course, not great. And a blast has passed away. Oh boy. Do we have any prisoner we can. Oh, hmm. We cannot even imprison anyone because our. Oh, we still could, though. It is unjustified. Hmm. now helping the Emperor accidentally uh, let's just assemble the troops once again and regain some power maybe we can stri strike him now down with more moral support I mean he also has this Count Heinrich guy who is just an outstanding guy you crooked Oh, the low Saxon soldier yells at he charging at me, his expression more than an oath of a wild animal than a man. For a moment time stands still as I'm watching the movement of a shiny sword coming straight for my leg. And it is Count Eglima once again, who's trying to duel me, the Battle of Stade. Oh boy. I mean, we already showed ourselves bravely, so... A simple duel for honor or not, Count Iglimar has an air of unquestioned confidence about him. When I charge, he snickers. At the end of it all, I'm lying on the ground, my opponent made sure to smack his axe into the side of my head. Oh, man. We broke one flank, though. Uh, but he broke us again. Yeah. No, we have to surrender this to this to his demise. He now also imprisoned us. Yeah, there is nothing we can really do. We have to surrender. The Nordmarkish Westphalian, the Jura war over Magdeburg has ended. Markgraf Lotte Ude II of Nordmark lost. And with that, there is a humiliating defeat of his life. The most humiliating probably ever that he ever experienced. We are now in debt. We are now... Now our children are in imprisonment by either Duke Hermann or by the king. He also sent our wife into Airbus tree. We are, we are truly a humiliated man and will probably die as such. A very, very sad fate. We are probably just going to retreat to praying for God, for forgiveness. And he even made our own daughter a nun. How could he? How could he? 
Oh my god, it just gets worse and worse at the end of his life. The poor Margrave Lotter Udo II. Someone with, with starting prestige now humiliated like never before. Yeah, we will remember this. The Belungen dynasty, even though they are family, will be one of our greatest foes ever. I've been using one of your trusted courtiers to pass bad information to Laps for several months, and the opportunity has arisen to place this traitor with Hive Chief Baby the Just at his court. I would like to travel together to you to pledge your service with my blessing and return here to take place as a Lepish agent. All is in readiness. I hope you to play your part in this mission for the good. Okay. I mean, what does the Emperor want from us? We've been tasked with establishing an agent at High Bilvi the Just. The time has come to visit High Chelfie Baby the Fourth of Lap's court. He set off in, dis uh, in disguise with a fellow agent. Even if no one is watching on this mission appears uh, anything. Interesting. After the Battle of Magdeburg, it has been my duty to inform the families of fallen soldiers of their fate. At night, I still see the hatred burning in the eyes of a teenage daughter. I know it's not my fault, but I have destroyed their lives. Some people are go always going to see me dead. Enough of these feelings, by God, I need to punch someone. Or I should have been, been mean, not the breath. No, we're not going to kill ourselves. This is nothing that our God would want from us. I mean, he also doesn't want us to punch someone, but we just damn have no damn choice. My acute budget deficit has allowed a smuggler's ring. Oh god. And me and Conrad now are being very close friends. And I need gold as soon as possible. So I'm going to send him to Pulitz to get me a larger sum of it. You have arrived at Chief High Chief Baby the Fourths of Lap's court. It seems you are expected. After a few words with your colleague, a retrainer ushers you quietly into a small side chamber. You are soon joined by High Chief Baby the Just. I've been told to expect you, Mark Reflato Udo II. Our mutual friend is here. My new court informant has told that I uh, suffered great wrongs at the hand. Yes, High Chief, we are coming, common enemies, let them tremble. I don't have any gold. I don't have any gold. I don't want to even become um, more and more in crippling debt. Yeah, we now have s two loans, medium loan and a small loan. Hi Chief, Baby the Just regards you for a moment and smiles. Good, then let us go down to business. The three of you speak together for some time on the secret matters on which you are briefed. Most of it fabricated nonsense, of course, before the High Chief bites you eat and rest a while and shows you caught here to seclude but comfortable combination. Interesting. He's now fat. <laughs> We should get married. No, we shouldn't. We are no longer at age. We should get married. And we, of course, accept the very prestigious um, commander position of the Holy Roman Empire. And everything has been prepared to leave babies the just content and none of the wiser of the new mole in his court. Who remains loyal to both you and your leash. As you begin your journey back to the Holy Roman Empire, you congratulate yourself on a mission well done. Great, and we can now closely become an Herzog, finally. <laughs> We're closely before it. I have encountered Höfling Britislav many times while carrying out my duties to the, for the Imperial Court for the Holy Roman Empire. And it's always a pleasant occasion. We can talk for hours, and it is, and if the time allows, because he never bores me. While our discussions are often lengthy, we always seem to agree on the matters which are most important. I think this is a friendship. Of course, my son-in-law is my best friend. And he is now a level 4 marshal. I mean, he's still just a complete imbecile. I still don't really like him. And we now have a scar, 
which goes above our face. And in the next year, we can marry my son off to Fredruna of Dannenberg. <laughs> I'm very sorry. And Luitka had, has, uh, had been released. Oh boy. I completely forget, forgot, I think I even did give him a, um, an education focus. One, two, three. Number six. Okay. Six is right here. Thrift. Now two can marry. Of course, we're going to send this off. Um, where are you? There are you. Assign a guardian. And let's assign... Radegund, which is currently at our court, and let her train her little bastard brother. The righteous Rook Lothar Udo, she accepts our proposal, and he is now the Count Bernhard of Dannenberg, future ruler of Nordmark. And we have to pay our interest, we have to pay our interest. How much money do we even make? We make 84 a year. That means, together with interest, which is around 20, we will need, oh god, somewhat around 3 to, f oh god, nearly 10 years. Yes, yeah, somewhat around 8 to five, eight, 8 to 10 years to pay off all of our debt. Oh. This is very bad. Very, very bad indeed. I mean, it's not, it isn't yearly. I think the interest. I think it's yearly, actually. Hmm. Um, yeah, this is of course very bad. Uh, righteous imprisonment. Yeah, nobody wants to imprison him. Nobody wants to imprison him. And the decay has increased by another percent. We know about at eleven percent imperial decay. Oh boy. This of course doesn't play in our cards. We're now fighting a war against another war against Doge Rula Roger of Sicily now. He's now the most serene Republic of Sicily. Hmm. And why are we fighting? Ah we want to they want to free themselves. At Mittelmark has converted to the province, uh, to the province, to our faith. Great. Now we want to build a war crest. We could, of course, extort our subjects. And with that, we are dead. Mark Grave Luther Uther II has given up his ghost at the age of 60. He died of severe stress. A shining example of vigilance. His duty was never neglected. A godly man, Lotta Udo is with the Lord now. Of course, we're going to do a little end speech to this Mark Grave, a very, very influential character for our dynasty and for the next, well, years to come. Someone who ruled this land with a cunning and still, well, vigilant lifestyle, a content life who only once fought a war which was unwinnable because of different circumstances, difficult circumstances. He was someone who ruled this duchy for now 28 years and of course left his mark. He expanded it from the small little province of Altmark to Prignitz and Mittelmark. Sadly, in his entire life he could never truly conquer Magdeburg, the last gem of his conquest. He even built a big, big family with people who are in very, very high positions. For example, King Bratislav of Bohemia is right now to, uh, married with his daughter. He also married off Radgebund <laughs> to the former Markgrave, who is now dead, and to the Countess of Ravensberg, the former Duke of Westphalia slash Saxony. He also had... A lot of conquest done in his life and a lot of prestige as we can see in the score and he lived a pious life overcoming his own sin of lustness after seeing what it can bring after Count Ludger has been born someone who will make some difficulties in the near future sadly not everything was a shining example of himself 
with his son Markgrave II. <laughs> Bernhard, uh, Markgrave Bernhard II. So yeah, he died at the age of 60. And with that, I will call this the outro for the first season and the start of the second season with Markgrave Bernhard II. We will look at his character and look where he will take us. Until then.